Welcome back, everyone, to the BNC. I'm your host here, as always, Alexis. This is Peter. And we're going to recap essentially all of the big news that happened this weekend at Comic Con. This is our special roundup Comic Con overview, not review, because we didn't go. Um, um, remind me, were we invited? The big tentpole news came out of Marvel and DC, obviously. And let's oh, go ahead yeah. and start with those. DC had a Justice League trailer and a Wonder Woman trailer that we had already done reactions to. They've mm-hmm. also confirmed that Ben Affleck will direct the solo Batman film. Mm-hmm. They also had like a Suicide Squad-centric trailer, which... It had a Joker Batman thing, I think, that they released. I'm trying to stay away from that, though, because they're, yeah. they're releasing a lot, and I just it's want to here. save it for the film. Yeah, it's almost here. And now on to Marvel, a Doctor Strange trailer. Mm-hmm. That was the only trailer they released to us. For Comic-Con, they had a special uh, footage trailer for Thor Ragnarok, mm-hmm. Spider-Man Homecoming. They also showed some Guardians action as well. They showed a lot of stuff to the people that were there. Right, right. But they only Which released good for one them, trailer. Good for them. And, I, and you know, to us, we got full details of what they saw anyway. Yeah, so it's and fine. the teasers for Defenders... Iron Fist and Luke Cage, they also announced Daredevil Season 3, unveiled Ghost Rider uh, into the coming to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season yeah. 4, which apparently has a connection to Doctor Strange. A slew of new logos, the whole new Marvel Studios logo, which I want to talk about right now. Okay. The reason why I like it so much about the new Marvel Studios is because I kind of feel that's their way of kind of separating themselves from the overall Marvel name. You know why they're doing that, though? Because everyone else was making not-so-great Marvel film. But I'm getting the impression that this new logo is going to play only in front of the actual Marvel Studios films, yeah. not the oh, overall. Yeah, oh, God. The Studios is very big. Like, right, right. look at Studios. I remember someone, I was talking to someone who had seen Fan Stick and thinking that it connected oh. to the other Marvel. So, really? Yeah, so I, I guarantee you they're trying to avoid things like that. They also unveiled new logos for uh, Black Panther mm-hmm. and Captain Marvel. Mm-hmm. And Guardians Volume 2 and Thor Ragnarok all have brand new logos that were released. I liked about half of those logos. The Ragnarok one, I don't like that. It, it it's seemed, 80s. It doesn't fit the tone of the movie I guess they're going for, or maybe even the story. Maybe the, to- the tone of the story is different than what we think, mm. but I was kind of hoping they would take a, a more serious approach right, tone right. to a film it, that's about basically the apocalypse right, right. and the end of Asgard and all life. Right. In Black Panther, they, re- they revealed more details as far as Michael B. Jordan's character is confirmed and will be the nemesis toward Shatala. They confirmed Lupita Nyong'o and the Walking Dead's Denai Guerrero. She's gonna play the head of his like security force in Wakanda. He's protected by like a group of female warriors. Mm-hmm. I like the Black Panther logo. Uh-huh. It, it looks good. I don't like the Captain Marvel logo. It's too red. To, I like I like the yellow logo okay. better. Even though I didn't like the Marvel Studios logo, just how it looks, mm-hmm. I like their new opening. A new Marvel theme, mm-hmm. a new opening credit score was conducted by the always great Michael Giacchino. <laughs> Uh, and that was a great opening sequence. Yeah. That was great. That was, that was really cool. They also really revealed more details about Homecoming, right? Because they, mm-hmm. they revealed Zendaya and Tony Revolori's characters mm-hmm. by their animated comparisons. And they also had some footage with Zendaya and uh, Tom Holland. Mm-hmm. The one thing that does kind of concern me, though, is three villains. Yeah. Marvel definitely knows how to juggle characters. But they don't know how to make a good villain. I wouldn't say they don't know how to make a good villain. I think I just they, think they just I don't, don't care. They don't care. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah. If they wanted to, I think they could. They just yeah. don't care. They know what sells the film. Exactly. Is the hero. We had more of Nebula. Apparently, she's a prisoner now of the Guardians. There's a new Guardian joining the team. Apparently. Yes. I don't know who she is. I forgot her name. And a lot of Baby Groot action. I didn't even think that they would take that Baby angle, uh-huh. like a Baby Groot angle. But you know, that's it's gonna, gonna work. Sell. It's gonna sell like crazy. <laughs> Kurt Russell was confirmed oh, yeah. as Star Lord's father, which is a planet, apparently. He's a <laughs> planet. A, I guess he's a planet, yeah. You just go weird with it. I'm cool. Get weird. And uh, Sylvester Stallone. That's, I think that's awesome. Sylvester Stallone. I love Sylvester Stallone. Hey, so, how do you feel about the Ghost Rider being added to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? There's two sides to this. One, I like it because I it'll get a lot of people tuned in to, to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And let's stop right there because we have to like uh, uh-huh. keep in mind here that uh, ABC's new uh, CEO mm-hmm. has been slashing like half of the lineup mm-hmm. like every season apparently because of, you know, didn't meet expectations. And even though Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I feel has acquired a, a growing fan base ever mm-hmm. since the show has been picked up in quality with the storylines that it has, I'm very happy for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. 
because Ghost Rider brings this show an extra level of hype and exposure that it really needed. Yeah, it's a Hail Mary. Because, I mean, compared to what all the Netflix Marvel shows have, they have a given, like, mm-hmm. hype and eventness to it. This or brings, even the DC shows, right, they right, get a lot of right, press. Right, but this show always seems to get left out mm-hmm. from Marvel, and it's just nice to kind of throw them a bone. From, I saw an interview at IGN where they have the, the showrunners of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. saying that they were surprised that, they, that Marvel let them, and Marvel wow. said, go crazy with it. The reason why I want it on Netflix, because in Netflix, you can get rated R, right, you can R, get yeah. dark. Even though Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has really come along greatly over these past three seasons, the, and they've really pushed yeah. what they're How many characters doing? died in season three? Yeah. Like, almost every episode, there was something that went off. The, the tone of the series has gotten from, like, happy-go-lucky. Like, Kyle compared the show to... Uh, the magic school bus in the first season that he called Agent Coulson Miss Frizzle and he, all the like you know how they went on yes. that plane bus and everything and then Kyle which, and his comparison right? and then when the but I like the comparison actually and where the show is now is completely different the the tone is much darker they do not have nearly the budget that they do have on the Netflix shows yeah, yeah. and you, I really for want Ghost Rider, those for, they're getting you the need budget. those yeah. you need those effects yeah. like I loved the way uh what's his name look the Nicholas main villain in, in season three. Oh, Hive. Hive. Right. I loved the way he looked, and I was like, this CG looks like movie quality. But they only had the money to have him for one episode. But they, they had the money to have him for one episode. In one scene of one in episode. one scene of one episode. But it was so good, it was, though. It was a good one scene, but it's like... Ghost Rider, he's just, he's just a cool character. And I really hope that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. goes crazy with it. Right. And I hope yeah. it's not scientific. One of the things I think is missing from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is... Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. shouldn't just be about science... It should be about everything in between. Well, if it's going to have a Doctor Strange this, connection, that. you would think they're going to go something down that route. That, that should be pretty interesting how mm-hmm. that works out, considering when you have characters like Fitz and Simmons who are science loyalists, yes. who are going to probably <laughs> like pick that apart and everything. I think the last bit of Marvel news uh, that kind of crosses over with Disney was the announcement of the brand new Guardians attraction uh, coming to Disney California Adventure Take it Park. away. I want to address the concerns of a lot of people who are kind of uh, upset at Disney for taking away Tower of Terror. I understand that you may have felt a connection with this attraction, but you have to recognize this. Tower of Terror is still going to live on at Walt Disney World. That's the original Tower of Terror. That's not going to change whatsoever. And in reality, this is a complete retheming of this attraction, but the same mechanism that is used for Tower of Terror is going to remain. There's going to be no physical alterations to the attraction. It's still going to go up and down. What they're going to add is probably like blasting music from Guardians, and there'll be random drops. It's essentially the same ride, but just a complete retheming and a much more immersive experience. In the loading area, they'll have the collector's um, area, what we saw in Guardians 1. You see all these uh, cages and all these collectibles there. Basically, the premise is the Guardians are trapped, and we have to break them out uh, <laughs> while we're going up and down this yeah. thing. I get the whole nostalgia thing to it, but I just see only positive things coming from this. It's just like a retheming, building on what's already there, but making it better. First of all, you don't like I have a very terror? sensitive stomach, so right, I don't, I don't like go anywhere it. near Tower of yeah. Terror, but I do like the whole Twilight Zone aspect and stuff like uh, that. Like, I, I, I do like that. It was a great theming. It's a great theming, but they already have another one, like you said, the right. original, uh-huh. and they're just turning this one to Guardians of the Galaxy, which I love Guardians of the Galaxy, and I think that's a cool... So it, it's should like, a, it should be a fan favorite attraction. I don't, I don't see a problem. And, and, then, and then I think the bigger news that's like kept under under the rug when uh, they released a new video with uh, Joe Rody, who is the uh, Imagineer supervising this project. He basically said this is the first of a whole new universe coming to Disney California Adventure Park. You just don't know it yet. <laughs> you just don't, oh, we know it. Marvel Land, <laughs> like. Put all your eggs in that basket. Marvel Land is coming to Disney California Adventure Park, and it is going to be happening in that area where the new Gardens attraction is going to be at. I understand people's concerns, but just be happy because we're getting—we're the ones that win anyway. I mean, we're going to get much more stuff than we ever thought we were going to get. Transitioning over to DC, how did you feel about well, their presentations overall? I'm not too hot on the Justice, Justice League, League stuff yeah. released, but I understand if you are. Like that's that's incredible, mm-hmm. you know. Like that that's big. That's big stuff. Also, because it took me, who was very like whatever, with Wonder Woman, and with that one trailer, it got me excited. Yeah, it made a believer out oh, of I me. I loved so. it too. Yeah, I absolutely so, loved it. Also, which gets me really excited is a Ben Affleck confirmation of uh, which everybody saw coming, but it's still great. Oh, yeah. to finally get that like in stone. 
It feels, it feels it's one of those things like fans will like you're gonna you're gonna let him direct Batman, right? And it's so it's so <laughs> funny how years ago when they first yeah. announced Ben Affleck to be Batman, yeah. all of the hate that he got. And then the Lego Batman film, I think, looks hilarious. Yeah, yeah, you haven't seen the trailer right, yet. Right. I saw it, but I, I think it looks like a good time to me. I kind of feel they won. If you don't pay attention, Marvel actually had a lot more announcements. Mm -hmm. Nothing crazy though. Right, right. They're just, just like confirming a lot of things like Brie Larson cool and stuff. stuff. It's cool stuff, definitely right. cool stuff. And especially for that mm -hmm. Comic-Con exclusive audience at Hall H that were there, they got to see a lot more yeah. than we got to see. Like, on, if I went to Comic-Con and I was in Hall H and I saw all of Marvel stuff, I would probably say the Marvel, Marvel one. Yeah. But as me as just a viewer, all the stuff that DC released to the public and all that, I do feel like DC won. Okay. For mm -hmm. sure DC won because of, or Warner Brothers anyway, because mm -hmm. they had more trailers with Fantastic Beasts, Lego Batman, Wonder Woman, the footage for Justice League. As somebody who is like super into Marvel, yeah. like I mm -hmm. loved everything they announced. For me, somebody who loves Marvel and is into like the minutia of every detail mm -hmm. and like watches all the shows and all the movies, I loved it. I absolutely loved it, and I feel like for me that it won. And the whole Guardians thing and the whole Marvel Land, as somebody who's a huge Disney freak and watches yeah. the theme park industry closer than anybody probably should. He's the biggest theme park nerd. Right, right. Okay. I, I'm just, like, excited for it. So that, for me, like, it blew me away. For me, yeah. though, the biggest news, not going to lie, was the whole Marvel Land thing, teasing. That was, for me, the biggest thing that affected me. But as, a, as far as, a, like, comparing, I'd say DC was always going to win because they had more to show and more to mm -hmm. offer. Because next year they have Justice League. Marvel has no Avengers coming out next year. All in all, I feel that collectively, this blew last year's Comic-Con away. Oh, by far. I don't recall a single thing that came out last year besides no. maybe a Force Awakens featurette that they released. It's funny because it kind of felt like this year was going to be the the bad ones. Yeah. Like they, everyone's like, oh, we're pulling out and stuff like but that. But they brought, the, you know? The it, ones it, who went really, yeah. really, really brought it. And it, needless to say, it blew away a Star Wars celebration. Just yeah. Like Comic-Con... It's probably bigger than ever now. Like maybe I might have underestimated it because it's, it's still alive and it's still It's still doing really good. So if, if Disney's going to try to monopolize Comic-Con out of the competition, it's going to have a, a hard time even though they have Star Wars and Marvel and Pixar and they have their own thing. Yeah. And the thing is with D23, it's only every other year. I mean, if they made it every year, yeah. perhaps it would have been more of a competition. That kind of disappoints me, because I, I, I thought about it, I was like, maybe I'll go next year to D23. Mm -hmm. That's not going to be next year. It is going to be next year. Is it going to be? I thought yeah, it was yeah. this year. No, no, no. La 2015 was the last one. Oh, it's going to be next year? And next year, to, like April, I think, 2017. Never mind then. <laughs> I might go. <laughs> we should go to there. It's pretty affordable. It, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's affordable. And uh, Alexis was showing us all the stuff she yeah. got, and I was like, that's pretty cool. Maybe we should go. Let us know if you want us to go. And let us know what you thought of what we thought of Comic-Con. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Peter, for being here. Oh, yeah. uh, thank you guys for watching. I'm Alexis. This is the Be Into the Place for all things movie news and reviews. Bye-bye.